guys, it's Petrina, your go-to girl for learning how to make fit work in a crazy busy world. And this week, instead of doing a weekly carb cycling adventure vlog, I'm going to do a science experiment. For the past two months while carb cycling and doing carbonite solution, I have stayed completely away from one of my favorite fave treats, and that is Quest Bars. Uh, for carb cycling, it was because I was trying to stay away from various processed foods. For carb night, it's because Kiefer has talked about research indicating that Quest Bars for some reason can impact your blood sugar and your insulin levels. So I wanted to see whether or not it would impact my own self. So I'm doing an N equals one experiment with me where I had my blood glucose actually tested last week and that came up where I got a 76, which for non-fasting glucose, they say that you should have less than 140. The tester even asked me, she's like, did you eat anything this morning? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I did. I had my typical low-carbing breakfast, which is two slices of bacon and a mock cheese danish. This was basically egg and whipped cream cheese mixed together. So my non-fasting glucose was pretty low. I'm curious to see what impact, if any, Quest Bar would have on the blood glucose level. If you've ever seen Quest Bars in the store, you, you may note how it, it brags that it's usually between three and five net carbs, which is the amount of total carbohydrates minus the fiber. Quest Barbs are ridiculously high in fiber. For example, my favorite, which is the Vanilla Almond Crunch, has 21 grams of carbohydrate. The dietary fiber content is 18 grams and there is one gram of sugar. Most of the fiber in the Quest Bars are coming from, and I'm going to botch this, I know, isomalto oligo, oligosaccharides which are prebiotic fibers derived from plant sources. If you subtract the dietary fiber from the total carbohydrates, you are correct, it gets three grams of net carbs. So you would think that it would have minimal impact on your blood glucose levels. I'm going to experiment and go get another blood glucose test taken. I'm going to have this as my breakfast and be tested within a one to two hour time frame after eating the Quest Bar. So. I'm curious to see how this is going to wind up. I will report back tomorrow. So it's about 8.30. I'm going to eat my Quest Bar and then head over for the free health screening and see what my blood glucose is at about an hour after I eat it. And we are now at a little over an hour after when I ate the Quest Bar. I went in and got my blood glucose level tested and it turned out to be 101, which was about Let's see, my original was 76, so it's like 25, 25 more than when I had my regular ultra low carb breakfast. So I'm a, you know, I'm a bit unpleasantly surprised. I was actually hoping that there wouldn't be an increase or that it would be like a really small increase because, you know, for me, when you look at the Quest Bar, the big um, selling point is the fact that the net carbs are so low and that, you know, with that you would presume that it really would not have an impact on your blood glucose level. Quest Bar, you've disappointed me. I wanted it to have no impact on my blood glucose. Why? Why, God, why? So I really do love the taste of Quest Bars. I love the vanilla almond crunch. But it does give me cause for pause knowing that it has had an impact on my blood glucose level. I don't know, what do you think? Do you think it's a big deal? Am I worrying a lot over nothing? But that is the result of my little Quest Bar Science experiment. As always, if you have any questions, you can shoot me an email at coachpetrina at yahoo.com. If you like, you can check out my crazy, sexy, cool website over at petrinahamfitness.com. Or you can sign up for absolutely free fitness coaching with me at makefitwork.com. That's it. Take care and happy Halloween, everybody.